I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. Earthworms. Hey Sam. Yes. I was in this band once and when we did gigs we had two roadies. There was a Polish one and there was a Czech one too. Czech one too. The very first game that I can remember getting super into on PC was a point and click adventure title. The deep story full of mystery and intrigue combined with the puzzles that required an increasing amount of lateral thinking to solve solidified its particular style of interactive storytelling as one of my favourites. And although my tastes have changed as I've existed, I still find myself coming back for more of that sweet, sweet combined megaphone with lighter fluid uses flamethrower action. Look, they don't all have to make sense, okay? This week we're investigating Demetrios, the big, cynical adventure. A game that knows what it is and takes that advantage to satirise its genre friends and itself. Released by French dev Fabrice Breton, and I'm very sorry if I said that wrong, under the guise of Cowcat Games, first through Steam in May of 2016, but now coming to PS4 and Xbox One on August 1st and 2nd respectively, Demetrios features a fun story, wonderful graphics that bring about a welcome sense of nostalgia for Golden Age point and click titles, and an attitude that doesn't take itself too seriously. There's a heavy helping of snark, adult oriented jokes, and puerile humour here but this brings me to one of the features I found incredibly novel. When you start a new game in Demetrios, you're asked if you're okay with toilet humour and given three options, which let you set the tone of the jokes through your play, a setting which can be changed at any point during play from the options menu. What's quite impressive about this feature is that Breton hasn't just put sensor marks over words or phrases that might be inappropriate, but has completely rewritten lines and chunks of dialogue to ensure that you get a full experience, regardless of your desired brow level. Demetrios also takes into account one of the age-old complaints that point-and-click adventures face, the lateral thinking roadblock. It's great to see that if you're faced with a puzzle or scenario that you just can't work your head around, there are hints available to you. Purchased, in a sense, using an in-game currency that are cookies, with three cookies being hidden on each screen of the game. Although it would be great to see an option that allowed players with, for instance, cognitive disabilities to obtain hints without the need to find objects that are typically incredibly well hidden, which may then act as a source of frustration, it's still great to see an inbuilt hint mechanic has been implemented at all. It's wonderful just how forgiving this game is to those who might need additional help. Firstly, the aforementioned cookie hints can be used multiple times on the same problem, with each hint providing a clearer set of instructions on how to proceed. There's also a feature that I've never seen before in a game like this. The ability to, at any time for no cost, display all interactable objects on screen, excluding cookies, with their names, for as long as you need so you know precisely what you can click on. There are a couple of other features that make Demetrios accessible in small ways. The text of the game, There Are No Voices, has been translated into several target languages, and the language picker features the flag of the countries where each language is native. There's also an easily accessed reminder of your current goal, which is great for people who get a bit lost, or confused, or who just forget what they're meant to be doing. The only place I feel Demetrios really underperforms is in diversity, where it's not bad, but there certainly could be some improvements. It's definitely very much your standard point and click adventure in this regard, and while I would have loved to have seen, for instance, languages from countries outside of Europe or a less predictable cast, this isn't something that I'm going to take points away for, but by the same token, it doesn't earn any here either, and there are a couple of on the nose story elements and jokes that might upset some more sensitive people. Still, if the lack of diversity is something you can push past and you love a good point and click mystery slash adventure, then go out and get Demetrios the big cynical adventure today. So, 
up humans and welcome to my bit of the show where I get to tell you that because Tiger handles all of the game critiques and Corbin knows so much about accessibility and Mort knows about uh, food I guess, I've started taking some college classes in the analysis and critique of film and television media. And now that I've been attending for a few weeks, I'm pretty sure I'm a subject matter expert and I know how to put my new skills to use. So here it is, my very first analysis, an in-depth look at the 1993 classic, Super Mario Bros. So like, everyone knows that the Super Mario Bros film is meant to be based on the game franchise that we all know and love. but. That's just the surface reading. If you dig a little deeper, you'll soon find a pile of subtext that make it obvious that this is a prescient warning about the dangers of considering yourself more like evolved than others, electing your officials based purely on how publicly revered they are, and like about the dangers of gentrification. To start with, King Koopa is a despot, a dictator, who stole power from the benevolent Mushroom King, with the only goal in mind to gain more power. He rose to power with shallow promises of a better life for everyone, brought about by the merging of the Mushroom Kingdom dimension with our Prime Dimension, culminating in the eventual overthrow of its original denizens, i.e. us. All because the ruling class have convinced the proletariat that we're to be reviled due to our differences and that we have resources available to them. In this situation, Mario and Luigi act as guerrilla warriors working to overthrow the oppressive regime with the help of a growing number of home turf anarchist rebellion forces including Big Brother, Iggy, Spike, Toad, and Daisy. Alongside this, there's also like a cautionary element that the Mushroom King represents. Beware, he shouts wordlessly from every set piece in the Mushroom Kingdom, do not underestimate those you consider beneath you. The Mushroom King may have been forced underground and he may be considered less evolved, less intelligent, less important, less civilized than the people who now walk all over him, but his kindness, his compassion, and his ability to reach out to those willing to fight for him makes it obvious that Cooper isn't better than him. This film has like so many warnings if you know where to look. If you let autocrats hold power for too long, Protest, even in the form of a song or a boycott, becomes illegal, punishable by re-education or attempted devolution to put the rebel class in their place. And when the members of the non-ruling class and their needs and wants are ignored, we see that society can take one of two paths. They can fight amongst themselves and steal and kill, or they can work together to see who their common enemy is hand in hand with strangers like Big Bertha realized in the Boom Boom Bar. Finally, this film shows you that you don't have to be complacent or peaceful or passive in your resistance to some smug, toupee-wearing autocrat who wants to merge your dimension with another dimension who didn't ask for it and who makes unwanted advances towards women and who lies and lies and lies and oh my god the lies just to maintain his place of power. Where was I? Oh yeah. Your rebellion doesn't have to be polite or quiet. Sometimes you have to make noise and rattle cages to make a difference to society. So what are you waiting for? Take the lessons that this incredibly inspirational film has for us all. Get out there and fight. It's a butt. You know, Paul? About what people thought was the most overrated chocolate accompaniment. Nobody could agree. Everything was like exactly 25%. People thought that mint chocolate was bad and orange chocolate was bad and strawberries and chocolate was bad and hazelnuts and chocolate was bad and you all got very passionate about that. Thank you. Earthworm Jim, through soil he did crawl. Earthworm Jim, a super suit did fall. Jim is just a dirt, eating, chewing like love warm flesh when all that came to a crushing end. Earthworm Jim, he's such a groovy guy. Earthworm Jim, he rockets through the sky. Cruising through the universe, having lots of fun. Here comes a you know that he's a mighty one.